Adobe has recently decided to wank up the price of Lightroom's monthly subscription again. And quite frankly, a lot of people are getting sick to death of it. That's why in this video, I'm going to be brutally ranking eight Lightroom alternatives to try and figure out which ones I actually think are worth trying out and which ones are about as enjoyable as a fart in a spacesuit. Well, unless you're into that kind of thing. No judgment. Anyway, all of the options that we're going to be looking at in this video can either be purchased outright with one payment or are just completely free to use. But before we start, I do need to give a quick shout out to my good friend Emily, aka Micro Four Nerds, because she recently made a video on this topic and it was her video that actually gave me the inspiration to try this out for myself. Plus, a quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by any of the software companies featured in this video and none of them have paid me to make it or anything like that. However, this video does have a sponsor and that's Exter, which we'll get onto a little bit later on. So, starting off with one you may have actually already heard of before, thanks to their fairly aggressive online advertising campaigns, and that's Skylum Luminar Neo. Now, at the time of recording, a lifetime license to this software is priced at $377, but it's currently on sale for just $119. And you can also download a seven day free trial before you buy. Now, between me and you, I found that Skylum always provides some kind of discounted price on all of their software. So you're almost certainly never going to be paying the full retail price for this. However, if that's not the case at the time of purchasing, you can also find a discount code in the video description below, along with links to where you can buy this software and all of the other software that we're gonna be talking about if you're interested in downloading any of them. Now, in terms of the UI, I actually think this is one of the better looking interfaces of the bunch. And right from the get-go, it provides you with a whole bunch of tutorials and resources so that newbies can get to grips with some of the software's features but broadly speaking it works in a very similar way to Lightroom. You have a catalog section where you can upload and organize all of your photos. There's a preset tab where you can apply different color grades and looks and there's also an option to purchase more presets via a built-in store but you can also import your own presets and LUTs so long as they are either an LNPC or cube file but I found that the option to upload cube files is actually a little bit hidden. You see, rather than going to the presets section here, you actually have to scroll down to the mood options and then upload them here. Now, the cynic in me can't help but feel that this may have been done intentionally in order to incentivize you to buy from their own preset store, which just so happens to be much easier to locate. But obviously, that's just a theory and I have no way of proving it. I'm onto you, Skylum. I see you. You think he's onto us, Kristoff? No, he's an idiot. Anyway, staying on the theme of shamelessly trying to sell presets so that you can afford food for your family, I have actually recently just finished converting all of my Lightroom presets into .cube files. And that means they are now more universally compatible with other editing platforms. So if you're interested, just head to my website and use the discount code on screen now to get 20% off everything in store. My children, Thank you. Anyway, back to Luminar Neo, and this seems to adopt a much bigger focus on AI tools compared to Lightroom or any of the other alternatives in this video. There are basic things like a sky enhancement tool, noise removal, and motion blur reduction, but then there are also a bunch of more innovative features, including this relighting tool that allows you to alter the brightness based on the depth of the objects placed within a scene. There are a bunch of portrait retouching tools, generative erase tools, an object replacement tool, AI rescaling, and a whole bunch more. Most of which are completely controlled just using sliders or painting directly onto your image. So they're all really easy and intuitive to use. Now, as cool as it is to have all of these at your disposal. One thing I will say is that it does make this software feel a little bit overwhelming to use at first. There are just so many things to click on and it makes it hard to know where to start at times, though I am pretty sure that this is something you would get used to over time. Overall though, I'm a fan, and assuming that you can actually pick this up for a heavily discounted price, then I think it's a pretty good value option too. So I'm gonna be sticking this one in the A tier. Next on the list is a piece of software that I'd honestly never heard of before, and that's On One Photo Raw, which is available for a one-time payment of $99.99, and you can also try it out for free for 30 days before you have to purchase. But just like Luminar Neo, so far I have never seen this software on sale without some kind of discount 
discount applied. At the time of recording, it's literally half the price at just under $50, which is incredibly cheap. That's the equivalent of around four months of Lightroom payments, and then you'll potentially never need to pay a single penny again for editing software. Well, unless you want to pay to upgrade to newer versions in the future, of course, but then even so, paying $50 once a year still works out a lot cheaper than a Lightroom subscription. Anyway, On One also provides a bunch of tutorials for first-time users, but as a long-term Lightroom user, I found that the UI was very similar, so I really didn't need any help to get off the ground. Much like Lightroom, you can start by selecting the photos you want to edit, and you can also use a star rating system to narrow down your best images. You can then move on to the editing section, and this is also compatible with .cube files, so you can use all of your new presets that you've just bought from my website. What? It has all of the sliders you would expect to see, like exposure, contrast, shadows and highlights, etc. As well as some more advanced features like subject masking, generative erase and a healing brush. Plus, it also packs in some fancy AI features as well, including sky swap, portrait retouching and AI resizing, all of which work pretty well. But one feature that I found really interesting is the AI Style Advisor. Now, this is essentially your own AI agent that will give you some suggestions as to which which presets will best suit the image you're currently working on. It can also be set up so that it learns from your past editing choices and then makes suggestions based on those. Honestly, at this point I am struggling to find any complaints to make and for just $50 I think it's very reasonably priced too. So that's why I think we found ourselves our first S tier software. That didn't take long. That's what she said. <laughs> okay, so let's look at some free software now and first up is Darktable. Now I'll be honest here, the one washed out grey look did make me think that the window had crashed the first time I booted it up, which isn't the best start. Plus, the lack of capitalization in the wording seems to trigger a level of OCD that makes me want to retch uncontrollably, but that's a me problem, so I'm going to try and be professional and look past it. Anyway, this is probably the most Lightroom-like interface so far. You know the score, import your photos, star rate or colour code the best ones, and then head over to the darkroom option to start editing. And that's darkroom with a small d. Now, whilst all of the sliders you'd expect to see are present and correct, the interface isn't quite as friendly or easy to navigate as Lightroom, which is a bit of a shame. You can import presets in a .cube format, though slightly confusingly, this option is found in the light table panel rather than Darkroom, and it's under the styles section, which did take a bit of searching for. Now, I do like that there's a search bar for quickly locating specific tools, though the problem is, until you learn the exact names of the features or settings that you're actually looking for, this isn't all that much help to start with. Overall, this really isn't a bad Lightroom clone, and whilst it might be lacking the same finesse and AI-driven features that were in the paid options that we've looked at, for a free download, it's probably worth a try. So this one is going in the B tier. Next up, we have yet another freebie, and this one is called Digicam, with a K. Now, I'm not going to lie here, when attempting to download this software for the first time, I was slightly concerned that it would riddle my computer with malware because the website is somewhat well, sketchy looking, shall we say. It's very much giving me LimeWire vibes for those of you who are even old enough to remember that. Showing my age a bit there. Luckily though, nothing bad happened. Perhaps the malware was just overwhelmed by the sheer volume of porn that I have stashed away on my hard drive. Who knows? But one thing I do know is that, just like this reviewer, Digicam is very simple, but also unnecessarily complicated all at the same time. It all starts during the installation process where it asks a seemingly end string of pretty technical and slightly confusing questions, which, to be completely honest, I just ignored and started clicking the next button a bunch of times and just hope for the best. Now, by default, it opens in this Windows 95 style white theme, but luckily you can switch this to the morally correct option of grayscale, after which the UI actually looks pretty nice, though not entirely intuitive. Starting with the positives, the image reviewing system works well enough and you can star rate images as you would expect. It also has a really nice geotagging feature which allows you to see where your photos were taken on an interactive 3D globe. No option for flat earth model though, which I 
thought was weird. Anyway, skipping over the fact that these options at the side here are written vertically, which completely hurts my brain. For some weird reason, the options at the top left all open in their own pop-up windows. This meant I was constantly having to open and close windows to navigate around, which got pretty annoying. I mean, maybe this is okay if you use multiple monitors or something like that, but for me, it just felt very clunky. Editing raw files is also super slow, unfortunately. First, you need to make your basic exposure adjustments, none of which happen in real time, which is helpful. Then once you've locked those in, you can do things like making color adjustments, adding effects and cropping. But rather than having a nice list of sliders down one of the sides to work from, everything has to be accessed from drop down menus at the top of the screen. And you guessed it, each of these open in a further layer of pop up windows. So whilst technically this software does work as a photo editor and is obviously free, the interface is just way too slow to seriously consider using it. That means, unfortunately, it's going to have to go straight into the D tier. Soz. Next up is DxO Photo Lab 8, which is priced at $229 for a lifetime license. And you can even try it out for free for 30 days without having to enter any payment details. Now, this is obviously one of the more pricey options that we've looked at so far, and it equates to around 19 months of Lightroom payments before you're completely payment free. Interestingly, there is also what they call an essentials version of this software, and that has some of the more advanced features taken out of it, and it can be purchased at a reduced price of $139. Either way, for this video, I'm going to be trying out the full package and using the Elite Edition. Now, when you first boot up DxO, it will give you three options. The first option grants the software permission to not only automatically apply lens corrections to your images to remove things like vignetting and distortion, but it'll also apply a base color grade to reduce the amount of work you have to do. Option two will only apply lens corrections and won't actually edit any of your photos. And then the third option will just leave the raw files completely untouched for you to do as you please. Anyway, layout wise, it's all pretty typical. There are two main screens to work in. Photo library is used for sorting through and star rating your images. And then the customized screen is where you get down to business. They want to do some business. Although you can use and create your own presets within DxO itself, these are limited to DxO specific preset files. So you can't import any cube files or anything like that which is slightly limiting. The interface is very similar to Lightroom with all of the options you would expect, and it's all easy enough to use and navigate around, so really no complaints there. The AI tools are all pretty basic though, including noise reduction tools, a resizing tool, and something called DxO Smart Lighting, which basically helps to balance the brightness levels between the shadows and highlights, but that's about it. There are some retouching tools, but they don't appear to be AI driven, and rather they use pixel sampling. So removing large or complex options can be a bit hit and miss at times. Now, don't get me wrong, in isolation, this is actually a pretty solid editing platform. But when you consider that Luminar Neo and On One are a fraction of the cost, yet include way more advanced features, I'm not personally convinced that this is worth the asking price. So for that reason, this goes into the C tier. Next up is a much more affordable option called Photo Director 365 from Cyberlink. And all in, this will set you back just under $100. Now, this software is essentially the love child of Lightroom and Luminar Neo. It has all of the core features and similar interface as Lightroom, but is absolutely jam-packed with AI features, though there's a catch, which we'll talk about in just a minute. For now, though, let's start with the positives. The UI is very nice to use, and it's very similar to Lightroom, which makes it easy to get started right away. It has all of the core image organization and photo editing features you would expect, and you can import your own .q presets. One thing I actually really like about this software is there's a design option at the top, which opens up a Photoshop-like interface for more detailed editing and some basic graphic design tools. So potentially, this could absorb the cost of both your Photoshop and Lightroom subscriptions. Finally, there's a batch editor, which allows you to make universal adjustments to a multitude of images all at once, like adding blanket noise reduction, removing backgrounds, cropping or rotating images, and even applying presets. So 
far so good, right? But what about those AI features? Well, there are so many, there's actually a whole section dedicated to them called the Gen AI Studio. Now, aside from the usual generative fill and object removal tools, there's a built-in text to image generator for creating your own AI imagery from scratch. But, and this is a Kim Kardashian size but, these have to be paid for in addition using credits. And for me personally, there's only one thing that's worse than the subscription model, and that's using credits. To put it bluntly, I f***ing hate the credit system, especially when it comes to using AI tools, where you can't guarantee that the end result will actually look how you want it to. That said, for just shy of $100, even if you just pretend that these AI features don't exist, this is still a heavily feature-laden piece of software, and a nice one to use at that, so I think it still deserves a place in the A tier. On a side note, if those AI features were thrown in for no additional cost, this would definitely be in the S tier. Okay, so we're on to the last of the paid software packages now, and this one is called Capture One Pro. This is actually by far the most expensive option in the lineup, priced at $299, which is the same as just over two years worth of Lightroom subscriptions. But you can at least try it out for free for 30 days before committing any cash. Anyway, when you first boot up Capture One, I like that it asks you how you would like your workspace to look so that it can best suit your own preference. In terms of the UI, as you would expect, the library tab tab allows you to organize and rank your images. The shape tab provides cropping and resizing tools, whilst the adjust and refine tabs are where you'll find most of the typical adjustment sliders. There are also some AI driven features, including AI masking and AI crop, the latter of which allows you to set a crop reference on a single photo. And then the AI will automatically create consistent crops for all of your other images. And this can even happen whilst you're shooting if you have your camera tethered to your computer. The style tab is where you'll find all of your presets and whilst you can technically import your own presets into Capture One, you will need to convert your cube files into ICC profiles. And unfortunately, this isn't an overly straightforward process if you're not used to doing that kind of thing. One alternative would be to just use the match look feature, which will attempt to mimic the colors from a reference photo that you provide, which is certainly a lot quicker and easier to do, but can have varying results. Overall though, I really do like Capture One and the only only complaint that I have is the price. Given that it's six times the cost of On One, but doesn't include six times the features, I think this one deserves to sit in the B tier. Okay, that's enough of paying for stuff. Let's try one more free option before we wrap things up, and let's try out Raw Therapy. <laughs> This offers all of the usual stuff. There's a file browser for locating your files, an editor section for, well, editing, and then a queue tab which is used for exporting your files. The UI is nice and clean, and for the most part, it operates just like Lightroom. The only thing that threw me slightly is that you do actually need to double click on the photo that you want to edit before it will show up in the preview window, rather than just a single click, which is the norm. At first, I thought it was just being super slow to load. Turns out I was the one being slow, which sounds about right to be fair. But once I was past that hurdle, it was all smooth sailing. To be honest, there's really not a lot to say. All of the standard sliders are there, minus any AI tools, but considering that this is an entirely free to use platform, that's to be expected. Slider adjustments happen more or less in real time, and you can even make localized adjustments. The only slight compromise you need to make is that you can't import presets as cube files, but there is a so-called film simulation tool that allows you to match the colors from a reference photo, also known as a hold C LUT, at least I think that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, there's a bit of a process to doing all of that, so I'll leave a link in the description below to a website that provides more information if you're interested. Besides that, personally, I think this is my favorite free piece of software out of this entire list, and that's why I'm going to be slapping this one in the S tier. So, looking at the final rankings, to me, it all boils down to this. If you don't mind investing a bit of your own cash into editing software, Software, then On One Photo Raw is arguably the software that offers the closest Lightroom experience without the never ending expense. Honestly, if I wasn't such an Adobe simp, this is the software I would be switching to. Alternatively, if AI editing tools just aren't your thing, or you just want a free editing suite that offers a similar Lightroom experience, I would highly recommend giving Raw Therapy a shot because it's completely free. So, what have we got to lose? Either way, whichever one you choose, with all of that cash you'll be saving, it's probably time you get yourself 
yourself a new wallet, courtesy of today's sponsor, Exter. Crafted from premium materials like environmentally certified leather and space grade aluminium, these wallets feature a quick card access mechanism so that you can effortlessly access your most used cards with a push of a button. For added security, this section at the back here blocks RFID to prevent wireless theft, and if you purchase the optional tracker card, you can easily locate your misplaced wallet. Be sure to click the link in the description below or use the discount code TomCalton at checkout to receive an exclusive discount.